So I've got a brand new Commodore 64 setup guide for you today, and this is going to be a C64 dedicated front end known as Nova 64. To make this even better, a new archive has just been released which features most of the Commodore 64 cassette tapes by various different publishers, as we can see just here. So in this setup guide I'm going to be showing you how to do this, how to set up an emulator to go alongside this to play our games and just go through the games themselves. So if you're a C64 fan and a lot of you are on my channel for that reason for Commodore 64 content, this is absolutely for you. Check this one out. <laughs> Okay, so I've got a brand new emulator or rather front end for Commodore 64 fans out there. Let me just say before I go any further in this video, uh, to the person who dislikes, literally dislikes every C64 video that I upload, I personally think you're in the closet and it's okay to like Commodore 64. I like Commodore 64 and I've got many subscribers who love it too. So just come out the closet and join in with the party. Commodore 60 forever, baby. So we're looking at... Uh, um, this new front end today for C64 and you can find out what this is over on the Lemon 64 forum. This is Ultima Tape Archive version 4.5. So you've got the download to link just there and it weighs in at around just under 40 gigabyte once it's been extracted. Uh, with this we're going to need a program called Nova 64 which you can get at the CSDB which is Commodore Scene Database. So if you download that, it's going to download into a zip folder, but I'm going to show you in a minute, just extract it and you can pretty much put it into its own dedicated folder. So it's portable almost. And we also need an emulator. So I'm going to recommend Vice here, WinVice. So just download the 64 bit or the 32 bit, depending on which type of computer you're using. And I recommend getting the GTK free version. So I'm running a 64 bit computer. If you're not sure, always go to your search in Windows and type in system information. And under system type, you'll find out what type of computer you're running. As we can see, I've got a 64 bit base PC. So we're just waiting for Vice to download, and of course this is taking us to SourceForge. And here we go, so I've got GTK3 Vice, and what I'm going to do is just drag that onto my desktop for now. Now the tape archive itself is around 20 gigabytes to download, but like I say, once that's been extracted, it's just under 40 gigabytes. There's a lot of content in there, and it's pretty much tape images, uh, images of the inlays, uh, everything's cassette tape preservation with this project which is pretty cool so we got the nova 64 which is the front end and of course you can get that from csdb and once you've extracted the tape archive uh, you're going to get lots of folders and in each folder you're going to possibly have an extras folder not every game has got this uh, you've got different versions as well of particular cassette games and we got a jpeg image for inlays for each one of the games uh, so let's take a look at something else we got here. So say uh, Chase HQ by the Hit Squad or Ocean. If we go to Hit Squad, uh, we got extras actually in here as well. And in extras, you can often find um, images of the cassettes themselves, which is pretty nostalgic. Take a look at that real film just there. Just think how long that one would have taken to load back in the day. Uh, we also got the inlay. So we got uh, the main inlay, the front cover, the back cover. And I was only talking to my fiance the other day how these companies used to rip us off back in the day. I used to buy a lot of these C64 games in Toys R Us back in the day or at little shops, corner shops. And obviously on the back of these inlays, you had a mixed uh, bag here of the Amstrad, the Spectrum and the Commodore 64 version. And as a kid, you're probably thinking, well, obviously, the best looking picture is going to be for the Commodore 64 or vice versa. You've got a Spectrum and as a kid, you're thinking this is going to look just like the arcade version. No, no, you're wrong. <laughs> and we also got inlay back. So, you know, this is pretty cool to, to read through some of the um, information, what you would have read back in the day. Uh, joystick controls, you know, really basic stuff, but 
I think it's really nice to look at again. So, we got everything here extracted, and what we're going to do is open up Nova 64, and like I say, this is the front end, and what I'm going to do for now is drag in that uh, folder, Automat Tape Archive, into that Nova 64 folder, and I'm also going to drag in Device folder, so everything's nice and neat in one folder on the desktop. So we're going to start with going to Nova64.exe, so failed to load config file, that's okay, just press OK here. So this is the main front end, and what we're going to do first is just go to the config tab. So once we're in config, what we're going to do is go to database file, click on browse, and then we need to locate where everything is, so it's on desktop in the Nova64 folder. And this file is located in your Automat Tape Archive. And if we go right to the bottom, we're going to select GameDB, that's GameDatabase.Splite, double left click. Next one down we need to add is Archive Root Directory. That's where all our games and everything else is. So we're going to click on Browse, Desktop, Nova64, and just highlight, left click on Automat Tape Archive, press OK. And finally, what we're going to do is just click on Browse on Emulator. And again, we're going to go to the Desktop, Nova64. And this time, we're going to go into that Vice folder. If we go into Bin and just scroll down, you're going to find lots of different Xs. Of course, uh, Vice, WinVice, um, emulates various different Commodore 8-bit machines. So the one I'm going to use for this is Time64 SC. Just double left click. And most importantly, once you've done this, just go to Save Config and press OK. Now, if we go to Games, you're going to find all your games are here, complete with artwork. And like I was showing you just a minute ago, we've got all the inlays for these. So if you want to click on Inlay Front, uh, we'll use this one as an example. Click to open External Image Viewer. You can then directly just go straight to that image or the inlay. Uh, got lots of different things going on so you know you'll find and notice that under instructions and extras not every game here is going to have those features uh, but the archive itself it's a work in process and on the next update of it uh, more of these games will likely have instructions and extras contained and under instructions we can click to open external pdf viewer if we click on that we can then open up the inlays, the side of the cassette inlays, obviously, and uh, check out some instructions. Pretty cool stuff, Bomb Jack 2. And, you know, one of the really cool features of this is if we go up to Publisher at the top, we can then select games by each publisher. So, obviously, one of the big publishers was Ocean Software. And although most of their games were, well, junk, um, you know, it was really nostalgic, especially for kids uh, in Britain like myself of the late 80s, buying these, or early 90s. Um, so, let's go to Ocean Software Limited. And here you go. So, we got all the games, um, I believe the entire catalog on cassette tape from Ocean Software. So you got your typical 100% dynamite package, the Adams Family, and uh, Adams Family is a total rarity. Um, interestingly, it's the, actually the WWF European Rampage Tour. If you've got a copy of this on the Hit Squad label, you're in for a lot of money if you fancy selling this one. So, okay, so I'm going to just choose one of my favourite uh, C64 games from the Hit Squad label, and like I say, and like you've seen, I've linked this up with Vice. So to load this, I'm going to just double left click on lethalweapon.tap. And there you go. Lethal Weapon is now loading. Now, if you don't fancy waiting around 20 minutes for a cassette game to load, all you need to do is just make sure Warp is selected by left clicking on that. And that's going to turbo boost the loading times. And we're also going to need to configure a controller. So if we just go down to joysticks at the bottom, left click on that, configure joysticks. And under joystick 2, it needs to be joystick 2 most of the time because most C64 games ran from joystick port 2. So select that, close, double left click on the game screen and that's going to bring you into full screen. 
And if you do need to swap joysticks very briefly, just go to joysticks, swap joysticks. So as you can see, everything's working fine. Now, like I was saying earlier in the video, if we go to Publisher, you've got all the major and minor publishers from back in the day. So let's just go to, uh, say, Codemasters. It's likely going to be there. So Codemasters, we've got two uh, versions. We've got normal Codemasters in Cartoon Time. If we go to Codemasters, you've got all of these Codemaster cassette releases. And, you know, this is type of releases you would have found in uh, corner shops at the time for $1.99, $2.99. I used to have several of these, including uh, DJ Puff, which I once had as a kid. And interestingly, one of these old Codemaster games actually released the other day. Uh, it was lost for like 30 years, which was Stuntman Seymour. I actually did a video on that the other day, which was quite weird to play uh, the Amiga version being used to the 8-bit Commodore 64 version for so long. So, as you can see, pretty much, I'd say, all the Codemaster games are in there. And there's, to me, there's a lot of um, nonsense in the Codemaster games, but there's also some real good games in Codemaster's label. And if we check out Codemaster's card 2 time, we got Ollie and Lisa free, and I remember this one. And this was so high-tech at the time, it came in a transparent case, as you can see, pretty cool. So, we've got Commodore's own games. And here we go, and this is obviously going to be your early 1980s, around 82, 83 games. So what I'm going to do, rather than go through each publisher here, as you can see, there's a lot of publishers for uh, micro games from back in the day, Gremlin Graphics, you know, there, there's a lot here. I'm going to just go to the top and just select all publishers, and if I just kind of quickly go through each one of these, there's a lot of games here. Uh, you'll get an idea if it's worth taken up around 40 gigabyte on your computer.
So that's Nova 64 and the latest archive, cassette tape archive 4.5. Uh, like I say, links are going to be in my description so you can read on this uh, for Lemon 64 and obviously CSDB. Uh, if you're new to my channel and you love Commodore, especially Commodore 64, you have absolutely found the right channel. I've done lots of different setup guides for various different emulators for C64. I've done many videos on modern C64 homebrew games. Uh, yeah, I'm a Commodore 64 fanatic, so much so I've even got a Commodore tattoo. But that's another story for another time. Anyways, if you enjoyed today's video, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss out on upcoming retro emulation content just like this one today. And also be sure to check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro. Bye.